This is a talk about being stuck by things in your aquarium, poison, bitten. It is not dog and gloom. It's mostly just funny anecdotes. So if you get to hurt, my friends getting hurt. I hope you were at least entertained. I hope you learned something. This is probably the nastiest one. I'm glad there was a good long break after lunch. Uh, this is a disease called Mycobacterium marinum. You'll hear it referred to as fish tuberculosis or fish TB, uh, sometimes also as the wasting disease or the whirling disease. It is one of the few fish diseases that you can actually catch. Uh, and if you look at those pictures on the right is my buddy Don Tunnel's finger. Um, Don got sick with this about a year and a half, well no, he got diagnosed about a year and a half before I got diagnosed. He actually caught this disease a year before that. Um, had a little nick on his knuckle, didn't think anything of it. Don is a major fish geek, has a lot of aquariums, about 100 in his basement. Um, does a lot of fresh, freshwater fish breeding. All different kind of Achilles and, and Corys and all different kind of things. A lot of big catfish now. Um, the oddball placos and farewellas and things like that. But anyhow, he does have some saltwater tanks and you can get it from fresh or salt. And didn't think of anything of it, and that little mick got infected, kept swelling, kept swelling, kept swelling, kept swelling. Um, went to the doctors, had batteries of tests done. For over a year, he suffered with this, um, to the point where they were ready to lock the finger off. They didn't know what it was, but they were taking his finger off just in case. Um, and those pictures are actually post-surgery after Don had been cured. Uh, so you can imagine how nasty his finger was beforehand. What it is, is this is a weird bacterial disease in that, whereas most bacteria reproduce in a matter of hours, this takes seven to nine days to reproduce. It also doesn't like the mediums that they use for the testing or the temperatures. You'll mostly get it on your hands and arms because it doesn't like the heat. Uh, you won't really get it in your main trunk, uh, or at least not showing up. Uh, so when they go to culture it, they have to be very specific about the way they culture it or else they won't find it. If they're not specifically looking for it, they're not going to find this thing. Um, so Don actually was in doing the pre-workups before they locked his finger off. And this is the University of Pittsburgh. It's a teaching hospital. One of the other doctors that was you know, observing that said, do you do a lot of fishing fishing, you know, uh, sport fishing? Pittsburgh has a lot of rivers. A lot of people fish for you know, uh, panfish, bluegill, sunfish, bass, things like that. And Don said, no but I have a lot of aquariums at home. And she said, did anybody ever test him for microbacterium? And the answer was no. They test him, and bingo, they find out that's what it is. The, the problem with this disease is your body can't outright kill it, so it tries to encapsulate it. And basically, it, it tries to just trap it, and then it breaks out, they trap it again, and you get these nodules that grow and grow and grow as your body tries to work against this bacteria. The hunk of material on the bottom is what they took out of Dawn's finger uh, that was these nodules of growth. Uh, there's a little ruler there, uh, but it's in centimeters. So for the metrically challenged, it's 2.54 centimeters to the inch. Uh, so that's well over an inch of material that they took out of Dawn's finger. Now, having known that Dawn went through this, I was aware that I was at risk for microbacteria. And more than likely, all of you are as well. If you're geeky enough to show up here to listen to me, you're in the at-risk category. Um, so I had this little bump developed on my knuckle. Um, didn't think much about anything, you know, I'm doing work in maintenance, I get caught on glass covers, things like that, nicks, rocks, stuff like that. Put a band-aid on it, neosporin, did that every day for a week, and it went away. But a week after that, it came back. So I repeated the band-aid and the neosporin um, for another week, and it went away. And then it came back again. And because I'm a stubborn man, I did it one more time, just in case. <laughs> and uh, it went away, and it came right back. And then I developed a second bump at mid-forearm, and then a third bump by the time I did the whole primary care physician before you get a specialist uh, on the elbow. So, Mine didn't get as nasty, but it was spreading more than Dawn's was. Little bumps, BB size, maybe a little bit larger than that. So the treatment, though, for this disease is, is a lot worse, frankly, than the disease is, or at least it was for me. Uh, because it takes antibiotics target bacteria at a certain stage of their life cycle to kill it. 
Uh, because it takes seven to nine days for this thing to reproduce, it's a long window of you having to maintain the antibiotic in your system to kill this thing. So in light of that, they put me on by accident, 500 milligrams a day, twice a day, for three months. Um, that will absolutely destroy your digestive tract. Um, I'm not lactose intolerant, I'm pretty much food intolerant. Um, but you'd think I could lose some weight at least, but it just doesn't happen that way. Um, but yeah, they did the same thing with Dawn. He was on antibiotics for forever as well, just to clear any off uh, left in his system. I know about a half dozen people with this disease, again, in the fish geek circles. Uh, so if you ever have some weird bump, uh, you might want to be, uh, be on the lookout for it. As far as fish go, you'll see them de de develop these ulcer on their body, uh, a lot of times on the gill plates. Uh, sort of looks like head lateral line erosion, but generally with head lateral, it's kind of whitish, grayish underneath. With these, it's red, but no fuzziness around the sores. And the sores don't really get any worse, but they don't get any better. They just kind of linger with the fish. Uh, fish might lose weight even though it's eating. These, these are all kind of signs that your fish might have mycobacteria. Now, in case this all wasn't scary enough, this is the thing that I think will put most of you over the edge. As far as treating the fish, the tank, uh, there is only really one accepted treatment, and that is a big old bottle of bleach while everybody's still in there. Um, you nuke the whole thing from orbit, it's the only way to get rid of this thing. If you do get a confirmed case, uh, I was lucky enough to figure out which tank it was that I was maintaining that had the outbreak of microbacterium, and I am very militant about washing my materials as I move from tank to tank for service, uh, so it didn't really spread, um, and I just nuked it, you know. Just went in there with the bleach, I told the customer it was fresh water, so it wasn't nearly the uh, impact as far as monetarily that it would have been if you have to kill all your live rock. Um, but it was fresh water, I just told them, you know what, we're gonna change things up. <laughs> and uh, did it on a weekend when nobody was in there, just put the bleach in there, wiped it all out, and then took everything out and started over. But the easiest thing to do is to not get stung by this stuff in the first place. Um, tongs, algae scrapers, magnet scrapers, lots of things to keep your hands out of the aquarium. Uh, it's much easier to manipulate rock with those. And if you do have gloves, I like these gloves. I get them from a laboratory supply house. Uh, online, you can buy them at a, a thing called labsafety.com. Uh, they're nice. They come actually in sizes, so you can get them to fit your hand. Uh, they come all the way up to the shoulder. Uh, very good to last you years and years. So uh, I really do like these gloves a lot. I hope you were at least entertained. I hope you learned something. Uh, and I hope you uh, all avoid you know, the headaches that I've been through. Uh, so just be careful, try to wear gloves whenever possible.